September 7th, a shiver of mystery sweeps across Paris. A well-known poet is about to make headlines not for his words, but for a crime that would leave a stunning mark on the art world. Today, on a day like this, the arrest of Guillaume Apollinaire over the suspicion of the theft of the Mona Lisa. Let's take a moment to rewind a bit. Guillaume Apollinaire, maybe the name rings a bell, maybe it doesn't. He was a guy who knew his way around words. A French poet, playwright, and art critic, he was one of the central figures of the vibrant art scene in Paris in the early 20th century, penning words that would leave a deep imprint on the world of literature and art criticism. Now, if you've ever glanced at a list of world's most famous paintings, I'll bet my bottom dollar you'll find the Mona Lisa atop that list. Almost anyone can recognize her mysterious smile. But why did she become such a big deal? Well, besides Leonardo da Vinci's exceptional craftsmanship, her elusive expression has stoked countless debates, and her charm has mesmerized many. Painted in the early 16th century, it's been stolen, hidden during wars, and even attacked. But still she smiles on, hanging in the Louvre and drawing millions from around the world each year. So what happens when a renowned poet and an iconic painting cross paths in an unexpected thriller of art theft? Let's rewind to find ourselves on the mild day of September 7th in Paris, 1911. There are whispers in the air that echo through every alleyway, over the cobblestone streets, across each cafe and manor. The whispers are all about one thing, the theft of the world-renowned Mona Lisa. Let's pause here to highlight how significant the disappearance of the Mona Lisa was. I mean, we're talking about one of the world's most celebrated pieces of art, a symbol of the Renaissance, beloved around the globe. This piece of art disappearing was akin to the Eiffel Tower vanishing overnight. Word around town was that it had been stolen by an audacious thief, or perhaps even an entire criminal syndicate, nobody really knew for sure. Cue our central character, Guillaume Apollinaire, a well-regarded poet and art critic who'd made Paris his home. A key part of the avant-garde movement, Apollinaire was no stranger to pushing boundaries. Little did he know, he was about to become entangled in a boundary-pushing storyline straight out of those crime novels he loved so much. On this fateful day, Apollinaire suddenly found himself under scrutiny. A friend and perhaps accomplice, Picasso's secretary by the name of Honoré Joseph Jerry Pierret, had a terrible fondness for liberating artworks from the Louvre. Fleeing France after another theft of Iberian statues, Pierret left behind a pair of incriminating statues. Sympathetic or perhaps foolishly loyal, Apollinaire held on to these purloined objects for safekeeping. But when he tried to sell these stolen statues back to a newspaper magnate in Paris, things got complicated. His secret dealings got exposed, leading the police right to his doorstep. The chain of events following this couldn't be more chaotic. The police questioning escalated into an arrest based on an anonymous tip-off. They suspected Apollinaire for not just concealing stolen artwork, but for masterminding the grandest theft in the art world to date, the stealing of the Mona Lisa. So Apollinaire found himself in a real-life drama. I mean, imagine you are just minding your business writing poetry, and all of a sudden you are being accused of stealing the world's most famous painting. Talk about a bad day. He gets dragged into court. Everyone's throwing around accusations and things are looking pretty dicey. But then, out of nowhere, the truth comes out. Apollinaire didn't do it. That's right. They clear him of all charges and suddenly he's a free man again. Imagine the relief. Probably felt like the world had been lifted off his shoulders. Now, with one suspect out of the picture, the question remained. If Apollinaire didn't steal the Mona Lisa, then who did? With the world's eyes fixed on this unfolding drama, law enforcement worked tirelessly to locate the real criminal and retrieve da Vinci's masterpiece. Jump forward two years to 1913. A former employee of the Louvre named Vincenzo Perugia, an Italian handyman and painter, suddenly became the central figure of this unsolved mystery. Ironically, it was his attempt to sell the masterpiece that led to his apprehension. The story goes that Perugia believed the Mona Lisa had been stolen during Napoleon's reign, and he wanted to return it to Italy for display in an Italian gallery. Hidden within his quaint apartment in Paris, under a false bottom of a wooden trunk, lay the world's most famous painting. His plan went south when he contacted an art dealer in Florence trying to negotiate a sale. Suspicion arose. How could this common man possess such coveted art? The dealer and a gallery owner agreed to meet with him under the pretense of buying the painting. But upon verifying its authenticity, they reported Perugia to the police. Now that's where it gets even more fascinating. Perugia wasn't some high-profile criminal mastermind, but rather a simple carpenter who'd found opportunity and misguided patriotism as his allies. He'd even helped make the protective glass case for the very painting he'd stolen. With Perugia behind bars, confessed and convicted of his crime, Mona Lisa was safely returned to her rightful place in the Louvre Museum. The world breathed a sigh of relief, and this gripping chapter in art history finally concluded. So, this whole wild ordeal, the theft, the accusation, and the eventual retrieval, what does it mean for us today? Well, think about this. Before the painting was stolen, the Mona Lisa was admired, sure. 
but it wasn't the universally recognized symbol we think of today. Ironically, it was its absence that made the world understand its value. People queued for hours at the Louvre just to see the empty space where she once hung. When she was finally returned, it was to an unrivaled status. She had become a sort of celebrity overnight. This whole drama stirred conscious efforts towards better art security as well. If someone could walk out with the Mona Lisa under their arm during regular working hours, then galleries across the world needed to rethink their security measures big time. From this point onwards, we start seeing the use of advanced security technologies and processes we take for granted today in museums and galleries. And now, whenever you hear about art theft in the news, it's almost always followed by a reference to the infamous theft of the Mona Lisa. This one event set a sort of benchmark for art heists and revamped efforts for their prevention globally. So the next time you're clicking a selfie with Mona Lisa flashing her enigmatic smile behind a bulletproof glass, remember how her brief disappearance more than a hundred years ago changed not just her fate, but also gave museums around the world a wake-up call they couldn't ignore. There you have it. September 7th, 1911. A day that went from a poet accused of theft to a carpenter becoming an unforeseen villain, all circling around the mysteriously smiling Mona Lisa. Did you know about this before? Or did it add another layer to your knowledge about our fascinating past? Did something happen in this story that I forgot to mention? I'd love to hear from all of you in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. It would help us a lot. Also, if you haven't done it already, Subscribe and join us as we dive deeper into the realms of the past. Thank you for being a part of this journey today, and I'll see you next time for another story that happened on a day like this.